On January the 16th, the Shah accepted the inevitable and announced that he was leaving Iran for a holiday. خیلی وحشتناک بود ببینید موقعی که آدم به خصوص برای علزت من نمیتونم خودم رو جای علزت بذارم یه مردی که تمام عمر و زندگیشو در راه مملکت گذاشته که با اون حالت بخواد بره و آدم ببینید سرزمینش خاکی اون جایی که دنیا آمده تمام دوستانش و هر چیزی که بهش علاقه داره بذاره بره و ندونه که آیا یه بازگشتی هست یا نه طبیعتاً ادهی که در کاخ بودن اون روز با گریه و زاریه میگفتن نرین و یه ده دیگه هم بودن که قبلا در جلسات می آمدن میگفتن ولی خب غیر از این که ما بهشون بگیم که امیدتون رو نگردارین و اینجوری نمیمونه ما برمیگردیم چاره خیلی مشکل بود به خصوص اون موقعی که اصلا خاک ایران رو ترک میکردیم که آدم فکر نمیکرد که بر نمیگرد همشه یه امیدی بود واقعا امید داشته. نمیدونم آدم فکر نمی کرد که اینجوری میمونه نمیدونم شایدم نه ولی فکرم نمی کردم سی سال طول بگیر While the queen had hope the shah seemed less convinced that they would return he took the remains of his father's body with him this couple were among the few Iranians who mourned the shah's departure millions more celebrated the light of the Aryans was stripped of all his titles. Newspaper headlines announced his departure with just two words, Shah Raft, the Shah is gone. The desk of the Empress Farah is still adorned with pictures of her family, although a palace aide said that one of the things she had taken with her was a collection of photograph albums. Quite clearly, none of the priceless pictures and mementos collected by the Pahlavi dynasty over the years have been taken away, and the staff and the guards are convinced that they're just keeping the house warm for their master's return. <laughs> In Paris, Ayatollah Khomeini prepared for his return. His stay in France had been funded by Iran's merchants, the men who bought and sold goods in the bazaars around the country. They also financed most of his supporters' activities. Now, they paid for his flight to Iran. بازار داشته بازاری ها بوجوهات می دادن روحانیت ایران قبل از انقلاب از این بوجوهات زندگی می کرد بنابراین روابط بسیار تنگا تنگی داشتن همین روحانیان بودن که دلار فرستادن پاریس که ما هواپیمای ایر فرانس رو چارتر کردیم اومدیم به ایران یعنی ما که پول نداشتیم دیگه Inside Iran, Hashem Sabahian had the task of preparing the country for the Ayatollah's return he started by negotiating with the army and with Iran's national airline. The government of the country came and accepted that the flight was completely in our control. The flight of the flight. The air and the air came and found that the band of the air and the air would be in the direction of the air and the air would be in the air. یه تیم ساری رو فرستادن با اونم من چندین بار مذاکره داشتم اونا گفتن ما هواپیما رو سلامت میشونیم اولا قرار بود هواپیما از اینجا جمهوری اسلامی بره اونجا اونا اونجا صحبت کردن دولت فرانسه گفته بود نه ما خودمون ایر فرانس رو میفرسیم و اینها اومد While the negotiations continued the country waited the army added to the already surreal atmosphere by fighting an imaginary enemy in training maneuvers mounted for the world's press. The army remains unswervingly loyal to the Shah, and according to the commanders, they'll support the government of Dr. Bakhtiar with resolution, patriotism, and discipline. By going to Iran himself, the Ayatollah is playing his trump card. 
It'll unite his angry followers there even more, and he believes it'll help them simply sweep away the fragile government of Dr. Bakhtiar, whom he's refused to meet or to recognize. And he called today on the Iranian army to refuse to obey its orders. بهش هم سفارش کردیم که بنزین به اون اندازه بگیری که بتونه بره ایران و برگرده بدون بنزین گیری خب هواپیمای بزرگی بود یه تعدادی از همین ایرانیایی که بودن همه همراه آمدن یه حدود 100 نفر ما خبرنگارا با ما بودن که خب اینا مایل بودن خودشون با ما بیان ما استقبال کردیم البته بعدا من ایراد گرفتن گفتن شما خبرنگارا غیر اخلاقی عمل کردید برای اینکه گفتید خبرنگارا بیان اونجا بشن زامن برای اینکه مال نزنن ما که نگفته بودیم شما بیاید خودشون داوطلب شدن ما هم استقبال کردیم ولی پشت ذهنمون بود که خوبه چرا استقبال کردیم مجانی برایشون داریم بیاریم ایران عاشق چشم ابرشون که نبودیم که گفته بودیم یک اونا میخوان با ما همراه باشن ما میخوایم یه سیف چیزی داشته باشه تضمینی باشه خب وقتی که اونا تو هواپیما بودن هواپیما رو نمیزدن چون خبرهای زیادی ما داشتیم که ممکنه هواپیما رو در بالای فضا ایران بزنن من با پلیس هم صحبت کردم قرار بر این شد گذرنامه ها رو یه افراد نیان گذرنامه ها رو من بیارم بدم به پلیس پلیس همه رو مهر مهر و ورود بزنه به من بده این همکاری هم پلیس داره After his 15 years in exile, rejecting every effort at compromise, the Ayatollah has planned his return with masterly timing. He's come back to a country which has been without effective government for months, and he intends to provide the effective government himself. Its main inspiration would be religious. can command such adoration. How so many people can believe that this frail old priest holds all the answers to Iran's problems. Yet, this, they say, is evidence enough that he does. Ayatollah Khomeini delivered his first speech on home soil in Tehran's largest cemetery. من دهن این دولت میزنم من دولت تعیین میکنم من به پشتبانی این ملت دولت تعیین میکنم من به واسطه این ملت مرا قبل میزنم Just days later, while Bakhtiar was still in power, a group of Air Force officers saluted Ayatollah Khomeini as their new commander-in-chief. The Ayatollah then named his own Prime Minister, Mehdi Bazargan, to head a new government. Like the Shah before him, Bakhtiar turned to the Israeli intelligence service, Mossad, for advice. In the last few years of the Dardarut, they were sent to us all the people, to the Mossad, and they asked us to do something with Khomeini, to make him from the center of the day. וברור למה הם התכוונו. ואנחנו חשבנו שעם כל הכבוד, אנחנו לא שוטרים של העולם. ואם יש לאיראנים בעיה, שיטפלו בה בעצמם. ארבעה ימים לפני המהפכה הלכתי ופגשתי את ראש הממשלה האחרון, שפור בכתיאר, בעניינים שהוא ביקש לשוחח איתי. בין השאר, שוחחתי איתו על המצב ואמרתי לו שאני ממונה על... תוכנית החירום של הישראלים ואיך הוא רואה את המצב. הוא היה כמו דון קישוט, חזק, אל תדאגו, הכל יהיה בסדר, אם רק הייתם יכולים לעשות משהו עם חומני. On the morning of the 11th of February 1979, Bakhtiar waited for a planned meeting with his army commanders. They never showed up. Shortly after 12 noon, the army announced its neutrality in the battle between the Shah and the people. Then, in a final bout of street fighting, the old regime was swept away. Two and a half thousand years of Persian monarchy had come to an end, 
and overnight, Khomeini's revolutionaries took charge of the ministries, the army, and the media. In the mayhem that followed, anyone associated with the old regime was at risk. Darius Homayun was lucky 